Hi, and welcome to episode 17 of The More You Knoll, a podcast about Florida State University. I'm your host, Mike, Director of Social Media for Florida State's Office of Admissions. Thanks for downloading this week's episode. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find prior episodes of the show on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, admissions.fsu.edu slash podcast. As a reminder, our application for 2021 undergraduate admission is now open. Students can apply on our website or through either the Common App or Coalition application. We don't have a preference for which app you submit, just please don't submit multiples. You can learn more about the application process and start your application at admissions.fsu.edu. This week's guest joined us from Florida State's Center for Academic Retention and Enhancement, also known as CARE. From the staff side of CARE, I'm joined by my colleague in admissions, our program director for diversity and outreach, Terrell Williams. We also have three current CARE students, Julian Levy, Devadric Ponder, and Ashley Gonzalez. We discuss the opportunities the CARE Summer Bridge program provides, our guests' journeys to Florida State, some advice for applying to college as a first-gen student, and we get to know how our CARE students are involved all across campus. And now, on to the interview. All right, I'm here with one of my colleagues, Terrell Williams from the Office of Admissions and three students from the CARE program. Um, If we can just start with some brief introductions and we'll start with Terrell since uh, I work with him. Hey, hey everyone. My name is Terrell Williams and I am the program manager for diversity and outreach in the Office of Admissions. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashley Gonzalez. I'm a rising sophomore um, studying criminology and international affairs and I'm in the CARE program. Hey, y'all. My name is Julian Levy. I'm a part of the CARE 17 cohort. I'm from Coral Springs, Florida, and I'm studying social work. Yer, what's good, everybody? My name is Devadri Ponder. I'm a rising junior double majoring in political science and African-American studies, all the way from the 352 Ocala, Florida. All right, so uh, I like to get started with this question whenever I have students on the show. Um, I'm curious to know why you decided to attend Florida State and what is something about FSU that surprised you after you got here? And um, let's just start with uh, Devadric. Um, So... FSU was not my first choice from the get go. So um, I wanted to go to HBCU. So my first thoughts were Howard and Morehouse. They were out of state, though. I was kind of scared as a first generation student to be out of state, not only like um, confidence in myself, but just confidence in financial stability in general. So um, first choice in Florida with it was going to be in Tallahassee regardless because I knew I wanted to be um, have a government influence because I wanted to, you know, be involved in that kind of thing. So the capital is the best place. So the family of Florida State. So for me, Florida State just um, through learning more about the care department in general, because as a department, the different resources that they offer and how they like ensure that they um, build relationships with their students and they're here for them to um, not just improve you as a better student, but a person in general. So um, when I found out more about that, program and in just the summer bridge program in general like I knew I wanted to go to Florida State so that was the reason I chose Florida State yeah so I think I'll go ahead and jump in so I mine was a little different I moved to Florida from New York so uh when I moved to Florida State just kind of caught my eye so definitely was my first choice but I did obviously it's a very vivid reality that UF is um you know in Florida and it's a very it's a rival of FSU in terms of admission and prospective students. And I was admitted into UF, but um, when I was comparing packages and obviously comparing care and what they offer in, in relation to what UF offers, obviously care um, provides more of a support um, family and just so many more things that UF just provides financial um, support, but it doesn't really f- provide that environment for you to grow and to push you. And I think that was very, um, it was key for me to attend FSU. It was definitely that support system that care provides. Yeah. So to wrap this question up, I mean, it seems like the common thread is like money talks, which for me, that was what made my decision. Um, I was, I played basketball in high school, so I was trying to figure out a way to like make that work collegiately. But once that went out the door, uh, I just had to go with what option I felt like was going to give me the most financial stability, like DP said. So that's what made me like uh, shift towards care and make the decision to come to FSU. 
I guess uh, I'll just follow up with Julian on this one and we can go back around. Was there something about the university that surprised you after you got here and started in the care program? The first thing that comes to mind when I say something that surprised me would kind of be like Ashley touched on for a second, just like the community um, that you can find within care, Uh, just kind of how close knit um, things are within the office and within the whole center. Um, and just how many different forms of support there are within care as a center. So I'd say that that definitely surprised me. Yeah, I think to echo the same thing Julian said, I was surprised at like the intensity of care because I feel like when I first came in, it was so intense. Like you had programming all the time. They were following up with you constantly. And I was like super shocked that it was that like it showed that they actually cared. Like it wasn't just, um, you know, you're here, you got into the program. Now you're going to go do whatever you want to do, take over, you know, whatever. But no, like they actually followed up with you every single second of care summer specifically. And that was like really surprising to me. Um, What shocked me the most was basically knowing the impact of black FSU and the people of color in general, like minority communities in FSU and the impact that they have. But to know how small it actually is when you get on campus. So it's like, wow, this community is bringing this major impact to this large university. So like that was the biggest surprise because I thought it was going to be like way more black people have FSU than I would expect, but it's not. But it's like, you would think so because the culture and the influence is there. But it's like, that was the big surprise for me. Uh, okay, so I have some questions for Terrell now. Um, so obviously, CARE Summer Bridge program is like, it's practically like famous in the state of Florida with how popular it is and how... Um, and how successful it's been, but care is like way more than just this one program. Can you give us like just a kind of brief overview of what care actually like encompasses? Yeah, so care is actually an acronym um, that stands for the Center for Academic Retention and Enhancement. Um, It's a department on our campus that provides access to traditionally underrepresented students, as well as equity in the admissions process, academic support, emotional support, psychological support for uh, first-generation students, as well as engagement opportunities for students once they get to campus. So it's not um, like something like uh, Ashley said, it's not something that you just, you know, you receive financial incentive. You actually have a family on our campus and you're basically in care um, all four years that you're at Florida State. And then uh, drilling down a little bit, um, since that is the most popular program and the one we're talking about today, what is the Summer Bridge Program? Yeah, so the Summer Bridge program is actually a unique program designed to assist first-generation college students uh, making their transition from high school to college. Um, This program brings in first-time in college students to campus during the summer um, where they take courses that are geared towards their major, as well as participate in special programming designed to familiarize them with our campus, as well as college life, um, preparing them for collegiate success. Um, Once the summer is over, um, students continue to receive that support services uh, through our care center until they graduate, like I mentioned before. Um, When completing the FSU application, um, students will be asked, are you interested in applying to care? Um, If you are, you should respond yes to that question on the application. Then you will be considered for the Care Summer Bridge Program. After you've submitted your application, um, the FSU care application will be on your application status check where you can complete that application. Yeah, and I know it's a uh, it's a pretty competitive program. Uh, we got a question from a listener on Instagram who was wondering how many students apply and get accepted each year for care. So that honestly varies from year to year. Um, I will say it's been a you know consistent uh, acceptance rate of about twenty five to thirty percent of students, but that acceptance rate um, is kind of you know kind of hard to judge because there's so many students that are interested in care, so many students that apply, but there's a lot of factors that go into our review process. So of course, there's the minimum academic requirements of having a three point GPA or a nineteen ACT or a nine hundred SAT. But that doesn't guarantee you admission into care. We also factor in your financial information. So you have to qualify for the Pell Grant for two eight years. So it'll be the summer that you enroll for Summer Bridge, which will be for this upcoming year, it'll be summer of 21. So you have to complete the FAFSA for 2020, 2021. And then that fall FAFSA, which is 2021, 2022, you have to uh, basically qualify for Pell for both years. And it will factor that into your review process. So there's a lot of things that go into the review process, which makes it competitive. So we only have uh, 400 seats in care. So we have to make sure we're making the right decisions for students that are applying. Uh, So I'm going to jump back over to our students for a bit since we're talking about the application process. Um, What was that application process like for you guys? Do you have any memories of of going through it? Was it stressful? Was it easy? You know, any uh, any tips? 
So for me, my journey to get here was pretty unorthodox because, as I said, I'm part of the CARE 17 cohort, but I actually graduated high school in 2016. So I took a gap year. Um, Like I said, in high school, my focus was basketball and being first gen. I didn't really know, like, you know, for for minorities, especially black males, it's kind of pushed like it's athletics or nothing, you know. So I didn't really look into universities outside of those that were looking to recruit me. So my FAFSA was messed up. Like I was missing information on my application. So I got into FSU, which was one of only two universities I applied to, that in UCF. I was missing information. So I got in general admission, but I didn't get in through CARE. And without CARE's like help financially, obviously, like coming to a university like FSU just wasn't like an option for me. So I weighed my options out and I ended up just taking a year off working and then I reapplied and luckily I got in. So yeah, my, my process was definitely like not. Um, for me, it was stressful because um, first generation just coming out of high school is like, you don't really know much about the academic side, especially being black. Like, honestly, the most thing I knew about, I'm from, I go to a football high school, basketball high school. So it's like, if you're going to school, you're most likely going to school on scholarship if you're an athlete. So like going to school on scholarship as an academic student, that was new to me. It comes with a lot of different guidelines and other, you know, requirements. So, you know, I had to definitely do like a lot of research and I was always on the phone with the FSU department trying to get questions answered because I didn't know what was going on and just doing emails. So like, it was kind of stressful, but the care application kind of was not as stressful. Like it kind of like gave you the chance to kind of debrief. They asked the questions that other applications didn't ask in a way, like, how are you feeling and how, like, how do you think you can improve yourself? Like questions like that, like to make you think, like, oh wait, I can't really... Like, in a, in a way, I can't really BS this question. Like, it's not like a, a regular college application. Like, I have to really answer, how can I use these resources to better myself? Or what would I do with these resources? So that was definitely um, a pro for me. Yeah, for me, it's kind of similar because I think, so for, I've always been very strong academically. So it's always been that at the forefront and not like any of my identities or my lived experiences. It's always been, you know, I'm strong academically besides everything else. So for, so when I was applying for care, you know, and I saw those questions because I honestly had no idea. It just popped up on my portal and I was like, oh, like, like I'll look into it. And so when I started seeing the questions and I started understanding really what it was for, it really allowed me to kind of explain and go deeper into everything else besides my academics. So I think the application process for me, it wasn't very stressful because I, it was something that I, I really wanted. It was like something that I was looking for kind of anywhere in my whole life because I'd never had a chance to really explain how different lived experiences affected me and care provided that for me. And so it wasn't really stressful for me because like I had already gone into other schools that were really strong. So I was just taking this as an opportunity to maybe join another community and another, a different facet of my life that I probably never explored before. So, yeah. You guys remember your decision day and what it was like? I was at work, so we were just like, woo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine wasn't that big either. I was laying in bed and I looked at it and I was like, hey. <laughs> Y'all are so modest. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was just kind of like, I was just happy because like I said, my, my process was like extended a little bit. So I was just like, all right, like second time. Like hopefully this time I actually get like in through care. So you guys are all obviously first generation. How did your family feel about you guys uh, getting into the care program and going to college? So for me, like I, I was held to very high expectations already. So when I told my mom, she was kind of just like, oh, well, like we knew that was going to happen. So it wasn't really all that much. I was kind of like sad that she didn't wasn't as happy as I was, to be honest, because, yeah. Those high expectations are a killer sometimes. <laughs> I would say the same for me. I always had like my family always had high expectations, high expectations academically for me. So it was just like getting into FSU was just one of the many. So that 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 was just a thing for me. So I would say for me, my mom was definitely probably more excited than I was. Um, I feel like part of that was because like we had a lot going on as a family around that time too. So I feel like my focus was elsewhere. But like my mom was definitely like a lot more excited than I was. I feel like like I, I didn't understand like what care was like. I didn't really understand at all what like was being done for me. So 
definitely, I, I would say my mom was definitely more excited than I was. I think I feel that I'm not, I didn't come through care. I'm a first generation student myself and I was uh, notoriously lazy during my college application process. And my mom was, I think, so thrilled when I got into FSU, but she was way more excited than I was. Uh, okay, I want to switch back to Terrell for a bit. Um, so obviously, uh, CARE has this great support structure. What 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 does that entail? What um, what resources does CARE have to help support students in that transition to college? So the biggest resource I can think of right now is having that sense of community. So like they mentioned earlier, that like CARE has that sense of community where you can basically be in a common area where you, you know, have somebody that's from a similar background from you as you, or if you just have somebody that you know that's a first generation college student that you can easily connect with. CARE does have their home base on our campus, I would say, which is the Thagger building, which a lot of students go and, you know, be in the computer lab. There's tutoring there. There's different, you know, resources for those students to basically take advantage of. So there's 13 programs and services within care. So students can take advantage of those all four years, whether it's if it's the computer lab, whether it's SSS scope or SSS STEM, whether it's Unconquered Scholars, whether our honor societies, there's a lot of things students can take advantage of within care. But also as a care student, you are you know available to all resources on our on our campus. So if you want to study abroad, you have the opportunity to do so as early as your first fall on, uh, on campus. If you want to do research, you have the opportunity as well. There are different liaisons within departments on campus too. So we have a liaison in our career center to help students with their resumes, to help them with mock interviews, as well as when different um, uh, companies come to our university, kind of do internship opportunities, as well as having our career fairs. That, you know, having that liaison helps students kind of figure out what our company is looking for. Also, we do have one in our undergraduate research as well. So students want to basically have the opportunity to do research. They have that um, on their plate as well. And like, like uh, our care director said, Dr. Stark says that care students really run our university. So they are a part of our SGA. They are part of our different clubs and organizations on campus. So they're pretty much everywhere. So you're not limited limited to just care. You have all these things at your fingertips, which we basically kind of push you out and get you involved in. Yeah, care students really, I mean, there's only about like 400 come in a year, but they are everywhere on campus. You see them making waves. I know a couple, we've had a couple of homecoming kings. I think my fig instructor back in the day was a care student. Uh, yeah, they're just, they're everywhere. Um, let's see, uh, what... Uh, Kind of on a similar note for Terrell, uh, what kind of programming does CARE offer like outside of the uh, outside of like classroom stuff specifically, like any kind of um, like like trips or speakers or anything like that? So I know um, outside of class, they have like speaker shares. I know for this past summer, it was very unorthodox because it was, you know, COVID. So we had speaker series where we had uh, different CARE alum come and talk back, talk to the students about their experience in care as well as what they're doing now to kind of help them figure out what their career paths will be. So having that, you know, connection to faculty and staff on our campus is helpful as well. So just having that resource within care to kind of point you in the right direction. So as a first generation student, you may not know what you want to do in life. So having that academic advisor outside of class kind of helps you, okay, you may not want to take this class, we can put you in this class, or if you want to basically be involved in something, they're going to push you to be involved on our campus. So outside of classroom, of course, you're going to be in class for a small percentage of your time at Florida State. So what are you doing outside of class that makes you, uh, makes you, makes you more marketable once you graduate? So whether it's, you know, doing an internship, whether it's being involved in one club or two clubs or organizations or our Black Student Union, those different things that you can be involved in, it kind of makes you more marketable once you graduate, which CARE does encourage students to do. So now kind of shifting back over to our, our students, uh, what are some of those campus organizations that you're involved in? And I think I'll just, I'll just pick Ashley to start with this one. Yeah, um, so I'm actually involved in SGA. I'm a Senator um, for the College of Social Science and Public Policy. Um, I hold a couple of positions in there. I'm also a program indicator coordinator for the Hispanic Latinx Student Union. Um, I'm an ambassador for Student Alumni Association. Uh, and then I've been in a couple of leadership institutes as well. Um, whew, okay, um, I am currently involved as the Assistant Director of Membership for the Student Alumni Association. I currently serve as the President for the Black Student Union. Um, I'm involved with um, the, in the care department, working with the care op office, yeah. And then I am also a part of the oldest and the coldest fraternity on the yard, the infamous Iota Delta chapter of Alpha Alpha Fraternities Incorporated. 
Uh, so for me, I, stir, I serve on the student advisory board for the Young Congress Scholars Program within CARE. Uh, I do research for the Institute of Justice and Research Development, which is focused on like, um, I'm tripping, what's the word? Uh, lowering rates of recidivism and people coming out of prison. Um, and I served as a 2019 orientation leader. Those are the first few that come to mind. That's great. So I actually had a question about orientation. So let's shift to that one next. Do you guys remember your care orientation and what that experience was like? And uh, do you have any advice for students who are going in through care? Uh, I know our obviously we're done with this summer, but for next year's care cohort, do you have any advice for them as they go through that orientation process? Uh, I would say overall, just keep in mind that like, um, for one, what, what you're doing is bigger than you, you know, like, um, being a first generation student, there's a lot that comes with that, that goes just outside of you being a student at a college. Um, and then two, just keep in mind how blessed you are to be in the position you are in, like, especially coming through care, um, because the days are long doing orientation, but at the end of the day, it's, it's like a week. And after that, you know what I'm saying? It's like a world full of opportunity that comes with being a care student at FSU. So I would say, you know, use your opportunities and your new experiences to the best of your ability. Um, take advantage of them. Enjoy your time. Um, know that you're going to be OK. Know that you're going to grow. You're going to be put in uncomfortable situations, but uncomfortable situations cause growth. So, um, yeah, just be open to change, be open to improvement. Have an open mind in general. Yeah. So I think my advice would be um, to just be confident in yourself and comfortable enough to grow and step out of your comfort zone as soon as you get here. I think, you know, college is especially for growth and exploring more about yourself and that new phase that you're stepping into. So it's very important that you make yourself uncomfortable as soon as you get here and you, you know, you start talking to people you wouldn't talk to and go into positions and spaces you wouldn't normally go to and um, challenge yourself. Yeah. All right. So my next question, another student question, um, kind of not not a care question, but I'm also interested to know just what was the most interesting class you think you've taken at Florida State so far? Um, it would definitely be my FA courses. So my African-American studies courses, because they definitely address um, a lot of institutional issues and um, legislative problems that we experience at a public university in Florida. And that where, you know, right across the street from FAMU, a very historic HBCU, very popular in the country, one of the top HBCUs in the country. So like exploring the dynamic and the relationship between both universities and how we can improve institutions. Like um, it was my AFA, it was my intro class, but like every AFA course taught by Kwesi Dinsu, like he kind of explores that like conversation of how can we have equitable opportunities for both students as we have two public universities in the same city. So things like that. That was very interesting. Yeah, for me, it's been um Two, I've taken two courses with Dr. Really Close, and I have absolutely loved them. He's one of my mentors now. And I, um, especially Social Reality of Black Males is the first one I took with him. And I think it was very powerful because I am a criminology major. And it's just been very interesting to see, you know, the dynamics of FSU and the dynamics of Tallahassee and then how that reflects um, national problems in terms of racism, inequity, um, inequality, just so many things that I think it's been very interesting to see everybody else that's taking that course and how that impacts them. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the most, the best courses I've taken thus far. So for me, uh, similar to what DP said, the first one that came to mind was a multi-ethnic literature class I took. Um, and especially being at a PWI, taking classes like that is interesting because I was one of, I believe, two black people in the class, male or female. Um, so learning about those topics, like DP said, in the midst of mostly white people is always interesting. Um, and outside of that, I would say I took an individuals and um, families practice class for social work. And that class was very interesting uh, because the professor, shout out, uh, Melanie Pelk is her name. She um, she's just very like unconventional. Like she definitely she's she's very in touch with what's going on in the world, which I feel like a lot of professors don't have that ability or don't have that uh, sense to like know really what's going on with their students. So she would kind of like tailor her class to what was going on in the world, which is very interesting. Like she she was always relevant in everything she said and everything we talked about. So. I definitely enjoyed that class a lot. Uh, okay. And then I got another kind of question that is uh, 
it's, it's I guess it's uh, more first gen related than care specifically. But I would just uh, I'm wondering, since you guys have gone through the college application process and you've had a couple of years in college, uh, what advice do you have for first gen students who are just going into that process? You know, our application for admission just opened up like a couple of days ago. So we've got students filling out applications. A lot of them are first gen and I'm sure they've got questions. So what advice would you give them going through the whole like this whole year, their senior year? Yeah, so I think my advice would be just like ask, like don't be afraid to call people and ask and just email people, drive people insane. Because honestly, like there's so many jobs just at FSU. There's a whole department just specifically for admissions and people want to answer your questions, you know, so don't be afraid to ask and just don't be don't be scared don't be shy when you're you're filling out those applications don't be afraid to tell your story and to just embrace you know that this is a it's a reality for you and you know you're pursuing something that's great and you should continue to do that I would say just to add on to what Ashley said um just have confidence that like you belong here just as much as anyone else, even though you are first gen. Because I know for me, when I was going through that process, oftentimes like I felt very incompetent because like there were a lot of things that I did not know. Um, but it's like for legacy students, like they don't know either. The only difference is like they have parents and grandparents who have been through it. So they're kind of spoon fed things that we kind of have to figure out on our own. So like Ashley said, just, just, just don't be afraid to ask for help and don't feel like that makes you like less competent or less like, rewarding of getting admitted into FSU or any university, to be honest. Yeah. And just to, to echo that, like from the other side, from the admissions office side of things, like, please like ask us your questions, you know, like Ashley said, email us, call us, you can tweet us, message us on Instagram. Like we're here to help. I always try and uh, tell students that just to remember the admissions officer's job is to help you get into the school, not to keep you out of it. And I think a lot of students come in with this perception that, you know, we're we have to make these difficult decisions about who goes to school. But, you know, we're really we're not trying to exclude people. We're trying to every student that calls us, we're trying to do everything we can to help them get into FSU, even if we know we unfortunately can't take all of them. Right. And I want to add something to that, Mike. So I like to tell people that we are the Office of Admissions and not the Office of Denial. Yes. So we try to find a way for you to get to Florida State, whether it's, you know, through our one of our pathways program, whether it's through care, whether it's through fall or summer. It may not be the particular term that you want, but you still have the opportunity to graduate within a four year time frame. Also, for first generation students, I do recommend making a list of what's important to you in a college. So whether it's affordability, whether it's location, whether it's your major, whether it's like clubs or organizations, just make a list of things that you think are important. And then you review or research schools and check off the list as you go. So if a school doesn't meet all of your particular, you know, demands, then you may want to look at another school that basically fits where you want to go. So school is all about or your college decision really is all about fit and not about anything else. So where do you feel like you be um, welcome there? What do you feel like you're going to be celebrated in your particular accomplishments, as well as where can you see yourself growing over that four year period? So not, you know, going to a school because of a name, but going somewhere that you can see yourself thriving in that particular community. Yeah. And then I'll just, I'll throw in one more piece of advice, which is not really just for first gen students, but for everyone, I'd say like start early, start the application process early. There will be speed bumps along the way. Um, some schools like like here at FSU, we've tried to do a lot to make the process really easy. Students can submit their own grades. They can submit their own test scores. So they're not really as reliant on like getting in touch with their high school counselor to make sure that transcript got sent or, you know, finding the extra couple of bucks to have your SAT scores sent to the school. We just let them self-report all of it. Um, but I know other schools may be not as flexible. So definitely start early in the application process because you're going to run into the overworked counselor who forgot to send your transcript because they're too busy because they have too many students to work with or or something like that. So I, that would be my biggest piece of advice. Um, so we've been uh, we've been talking college admissions for a little bit. I want to uh, shift into uh, what I jokingly call the lightning round, even though it doesn't go any faster than the rest of the show. Uh, but so I'll just start with uh, these are for everyone. And we'll start with Julian. What is just your favorite thing about Florida State? I'd say for me, probably the basketball team, going to the basketball games, especially with how good we've been, like since I came, definitely going to the home basketball games has been my favorite part. Specifically, when we played Duke last year, like seeing Zion, oh, yeah. Cam, and RJ in real life was wild, especially since we almost won. That was 
definitely probably one of my top moments here. I got to give a shout out to, uh, we're recording this on Coach Ham's birthday. So a sh- shout out to Coach Ham. You've been here as long as I have, and it's been a long journey, and it's so cool to see how far this team has come. Absolutely. Mine is kind of similar. Um, the traditions is one of my favorite things about FSU. Um, just seeing like how much stuff we have, especially at the football games, it's just really, really special to be in that environment. Um, I would just say just Black FSU in general. I just love just the culture. It's a great time. Market Wednesday, great time. Homecoming, great time. Yeah, so this is going to sound really cliche, but my favorite thing about Florida State is care. Um, so as a first-generation student myself, um, I am proud of the fact that we have a home base for our first-generation population of students where they can basically go and be themselves as well as have additional resources that are psychological, physical, as well as emotional support and connect with other people from similar backgrounds. So just having that home base for students is the, my favorite thing about Florida State. All right. So when you guys need to get lunch and you're on campus, uh, where do you guys go for lunch? The only um, requirement on this answer is that it's got to be like a local business. Um, I mean, it's like three places off road I'm going to go to. So A-Town Wings, Olean's and Chicago. Chicago Chicken and Grill. Always easy. Guthrie's is definitely my go to. Not a gut box. Yeah, you got to have the gut box when you come to Tallahassee. Uh, I, was, I lived across the street from Guthrie's in college, and I think I ate there like once a week. <laughs> it's some really good chicken. That's really all that yeah. you can really say about it. But my favorite place to eat in town is um, Little Massa, which is located in College Town. So I'm a really big fan of stir fry. So I just go in there and get the shrimp stir fry and it fills me up. And then you have enough for leftovers, too. So it's a great, you know, affordable place to go eat. All right. And then my uh, my last lightning round question is, what have you guys been doing with your like quarantine life? Have you been catching up on any books or movies or projects or anything like that? Uh, I'm real good into music. So for me, I've just been like taking some time to like listen to albums that I've never heard before, try and find new artists. Um, and then I also really like writing. So I'll try and write here and then when I have the time to. And then just trying to find that balance between, because I'm more introverted, so I don't mind staying inside, like, in my room. But trying to find that balance between that and, like, still getting some sunlight. So, like, making sure I still go exercise, go, like, shoot around or go run. Yeah, for me, um, I've been trying to read, but I've actually been really, really busy. But I have been trying to read because in high school, it was, like, a really big thing for me. I love to read, but I haven't really found time to do it. So I'm trying to get back into it. Honestly, I've been protesting, still doing classes, working online, or trying to work out, trying to stay sane in the world of quarantine. It ain't been fun. I'm a socialite. It ain't been fun for me. And I'll just echo that with DP. Um, so I'm a very sociable person, too. So being inside, you know, it's really difficult for the last four or five months. Um, and, you know, trying to remain sane, like he said. So, you know, with all the protests and social justice issues going on, it's just hard to kind of avoid it. So, you know, having that and how do we address those issues with protesting, with, you know, putting in place things that are going to help, you know, socioeconomically disadvantaged people as well as black people in general. So how can we help um, as a university and just kind of thinking of ideas that we can implement at Florida state to make, you know, make sure that we are having a place of community for our black students, as well as a safe space for all, you know, um, types of students that come to our university. All right. All right. Then my last question for everyone, Um, if you could only give our incoming students one piece of advice, what would that be? Um, I guess I'll take this one. My piece of advice would be um, there is no timeline. You are your timeline. It's good to get out in four years, but, you know, whatever your timeline may be, if you do it in two, if you do it in six, do it on your time, do it on your terms and through your experiences, because nothing is going to be like your four years in your undergraduate. So, yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes and you'll be okay. I think for me, it would be like, put yourself in uncomfortable positions and look for that acknowledge you and your identity. And if there isn't a space on campus, create one. For me, I would say the biggest thing I'll tell incoming students is just kind of, um, I like to say like, there's this power in testimony. So kind of like own your experiences, own your story, own what you've been through and keep that close to kind of like fuel you. 
and drive you forward. And just like keep in mind the fact that you're you are one of one, you know, that you have a purpose here and that like DP said, regardless of what that journey looks like, um, just as long as you stick with it, like it'll it'll get fulfilled when it's supposed to. And my advice coming from the admission side is to re- to understand that comparison is a thief of joy. So do not compare your journey with anybody else. Everybody has their own individual race that they're running. You need to realize that it's a marathon and not a sprint. So, you know, just put your best foot forward day by day and just kind of understand that, you know, your story is different and your story is unique. So make sure that you basically tell us your story and how can we help you, you know, be successful at Florida State or how can we help you be successful going to your next step in life? All right. Some great advice from our panel. Terrell, Julian, Devodrick, Ashley, thank you guys so much for being here today and go Knowles. Go Knowles. Thank you. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Ashley, Devodrick, Julian, and Terrell for their time. If you'd like to learn more about the CARE Summer Bridge program and how to apply, check out care.fsu.edu and follow at care underscore FSU on Twitter and Instagram and like FSU Care on Facebook. If you're a first generation student from Florida and you'd like to apply for CARE, be sure to answer yes to the CARE question on your application for admission to start that process. If you've been enjoying the show, we'd really appreciate you leaving us a rating, review, or recommendation on iTunes or whichever podcast app you use. Word of mouth is also a huge help for us, so please share the show with any of your friends or family members who you think might enjoy it. If you have questions or feedback on the show, please send those to us on social media. We are at FSU Admissions on Twitter and Facebook and at FSU.admissions on Instagram. You can also email questions or feedback on the show to admissions at FSU.edu just be sure to include the word podcast in the subject line. As always, our theme music is the world-renowned Florida State University Marching Chiefs, recordings courtesy of Mark Records, Clarence, New York, markcustom.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and go Knowles!